the U.S. is fully powered by wind, the ground could get warmer. Don't worry, wind and other renewable energy sources are still better than burning fossil fuels. A new Harvard study by Lee Miller and David Keith simulated the effects of switching the country's entire power grid to wind power to look at the effect turbines have on local temperature. According to Ars Technica, wind turbines can alter local temperatures by increasing the mixing of air at and above the surface. Their results showed that continental U.S. would get warmer by about 0.2 degrees Celsius on average, while the regions with the wind turbines would warm by around 0.5 degrees Celsius. Temperature fluctuations would be greater at night and smaller during the day because surface warming and sun-driven convection are greater than the effect of the wind turbines. At night, when the air is calmer, wind turbines mix warmer air down toward the cooling surface. An important point is that the wind turbines are not generating heat, rather they are moving existing heat around. Greenhouse gases from fossil fuels, on the other hand, continually accumulate and last for centuries. Keep watching for more stories. World's first floating dairy farm set to open. Looks like it may be time for traditional farming to move over. The world's first fully functional floating dairy farm is set to begin operations in the Netherlands. According to Business Insider, the three-level, 89 by 89 foot complex will be floating in the water in Rotterdam. The bottom level of the facility will house the processing and packaging machinery with the cows and milking robots on the second level, while the third floor will grow clover and grass for the cows to eat. The floating dairy will have 40 cows and can produce around 211 gallons of milk daily. According to Mig van Wingerden, co-leader of the project, who talked with Business Insider, the farm will try to recycle as much as possible. Cows will be fed leftover food waste from the city. The cow's manure will be processed and sold as fertilizer. She also said the floating farm can be made to be hurricane resistant. Van Wingerden said talks are underway with another Dutch city for a second farm. She said the company is also interested in opening farms in Singapore and China. There's methane gas leaking from an Alaskan lake. Can you feel it getting hotter? If not, you will. Researchers have discovered a lake in Alaska that is bubbling due to methane emissions. In a feature for the Washington Post, according to Katie Walter Anthony, an associate professor at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, the bubbles in Lake Essia are being caused by methane gas release. Due to increasing temperatures from global warming, ground that used to be permafrost in the Arctic is now thawing and releasing trapped greenhouse gases into the air, thereby accelerating climate change. The gases are geological in origin. The researchers say there are fossil fuels buried close to the bottom of the lake and in combination with the melting of the permafrost represent a source of greenhouse gases. The lake emits around two tons of methane gas daily, the equivalent of methane emissions from 6,000 dairy cows. Scientists will need to do further research to see if this phenomenon is occurring in other Arctic lakes. Is it really the final straw for plastic? Take that straw out of your mouth. Cities are increasingly cracking down on single-use plastic straws. Americans use about 500 million straws a day, which works out to 1.5 straws a citizen every 24 hours. In the UK, 8.5 billion plastic straws are used each year. Straws are difficult to recycle and usually end up in landfills or being incinerated, but they are increasingly clogging up waterways and oceans as well. Cities worldwide are increasingly discouraging the use of straws, with some even outright banning them. Others have vowed to phase out plastics over the next decades. Plastic straw alternatives have also started to gain in popularity. They are made from materials like bamboo, metal, glass, paper, potato, or corn paste. But let's be honest, can you really teach an old dog new tricks? China doesn't want the UK's recycled plastic anymore. Rich countries are now scrambling to find other places to dump their garbage after China's recent plastics ban. China imported 7.3 million tons of plastic waste in 2017 from the US, the EU, the UK and Japan. But starting this year, it's banning 24 categories of recyclables and solid waste. Britain alone sends around two-thirds, about 500,000 tons, of its recycled plastic to China every year. UK recycling firms are now looking to Malaysia and Vietnam. However, both those countries have capacity issues. Unless other alternative markets can be found, the plastics will have to be sent for incineration or dumped in a landfill. Well, we could always start launching all of our garbage into space. 
plastics could be entering the food chain via mosquitoes. At this point, people should just be eating straight plastic and cut out all the middlemen. According to new research, microplastics could be entering the food chain through mosquitoes, threatening birds and other creatures that consume the flying insects. Scientists fed microplastics to mosquito larvae and discovered the plastics remained inside the insects after they became adults. The study was published in the journal Biology Letters on Wednesday. Researchers from the University of Reading used Culex pipiens mosquitoes because of their prevalence around many global habitats. The team found the larvae consumed fluorescent microplastic particles that were 0.002 centimeters in size. According to The Guardian, as the larvae matured into the pupa stage and then into adult mosquitoes, many of the particles were transferred as well. This means that creatures that eat the mosquitoes, such as birds, bats and spiders, are also ingesting the plastics. The lead author of the study, Amanda Callahan, a biological scientist at Reading, told the AFP, although the research was carried out in a lab, it was highly possible this process was also occurring in the wild. Well, that's a relief. Sewage plants leaking plastic beads into British seas. Here's some good news for a change. Looks like we've discovered a new source of ocean plastic pollution. According to a new report, sewage plants could be leaking millions of tiny plastic beads used for wastewater treatment into British seas. 55 treatment facilities across the UK use the 3.5 mm wide bio bead plastic pellets to filter chemical and organic contaminants out of sewage. Bio beads are used in the last step before treated effluent water is discharged back into rivers or the sea. Currently, no mechanism is in place to stop the beads in the event of a spill. Plastic microbeads kill marine life by blocking the digestive tract, but also as a result of exposure to chemical pollutants like DDT and PCBs that attach to the plastic beads in seawater.